Okay, we've got a 60 minute 10 second classical game. Want to look at working through the answer and the mantra. We're playing somebody who's got a question mark on, so they may have just joined the site. And uh, so this is like a provisional rating, so we don't really know their full strength. So our mantra is simple direct moves to remove pieces from the ball strategically. And by strategically we mean by blocking any threats, establishing threats of our own, to keep the tension, watching the blind spots, overthinking, placement of pieces, especially the queen. I'm going to bring the bishop here, defending the pawn, or shall we attack the king just to push the pawn down? He's blocked his passageway for his own bishop here. Let's just bring it here. Yeah. Yep. Uh, tension, blind spots, overthinking, placement of the pieces, especially the queen, and rewriting predicted moves in order to avoid tunnel vision, and then be able to deliver simple direct moves to remove pieces from the board. So that's what we've got to think about in every move that we're making. That is the mantra and the answer is about putting pressure on the king area or key spaces, key pieces uh, around the king area to gain an advantage in the game. Okay, so in a nutshell, simple direct moves, currently king safety. Simple direct moves to remove pieces from the ball strategically in order to get the answer. So that's as simple as I can put it for our own years of watching other people play, understanding how they play, understanding um, what the mechanics behind getting an advantage in a game. It's not to say I will get the advantage in this game or any games that I'm playing, but it's understand I understand how it's working. Yeah, so I'm trying to circumvent them all the time, trying to develop my own attacks all the time. So it's nice and steady. We could actually touch the knight just to um, get some activity going or develop our bishop here. I'm feeling a bit naughty. I'm going to attack the knight. So it's attacking a higher piece with a smaller piece. That is one key thing that we do like to practice. And again, we're attacking a higher piece with a smaller piece. So it gives the opponent something to think about. Knight moves again now, attacking a higher piece with a smaller piece. He does have a bit of a safe haven, our bishop can take, his pawn takes. Got to be conscious that his rook will come here and then that's in front of our own king area. Do we want that situation? Can we capitalise on that? So if the bishop did take the knight, the pawn takes, the queen could come up to attack the pawn, but then he does have the support from his own queen with his bishop to come here. But we do have the knight which could take the bishop. So that may, hmm, but he's got the pawns, hmm, yeah. no the pawn's not there is it? Yeah, okay. So it is doable. Do we want to risk it for a biscuit? Simple direct moves to remove pieces from the board strategically. So we'll take the knight off the board, believing that strategically it's going to put us in a better position. And attack the pawn as we said with the queen. This is, yes, this pawn is still there, but the bishop it's not going to come here. I believe the rook is going to come here to face the king. I'm fairly comfortable with the bishop can go backwards again, but that's blocking his own king. He does move the pawn down, so if we brought the queen here, circumventing now any castling aspect. We have the white square bishop now with a two on one on this pawn here. 
if the bishop did take then we've sort of pinned our bishop to our to the rook but our queen can come and attack the rook here but if we do that his bishop will come and attack but we have to pawn here to defend so I think we can attack the rook and maybe the rook just goes to the side and maybe the queen then can take the pawn but before we think about taking any pawn situation we've got knight that could be developed but we're looking at pressurizing the king area but one of the falling failing things about pressurizing the king you know with immediate effect what what's supporting any pieces because like now our bishop can take the pawn getting more pieces up into this area queen can take develop the knight so that the rooks are linking up develop the knight, get the knight up get the knight further up I think it's probably better mind you, am I going to miss out on capturing hmm I'm thinking developing the knight, get the rooks facing the queen. Yeah, more pieces into the game is going to be better strategically, I think. So in this case here, capturing a piece I don't think was strategically sound. That would have maybe lost. Yeah, he's running now because he doesn't want to lose that pawn. But what we've done is made a decision that... Uh, we potentially, if we went here, his bishop would take. If we go here, like we were going to do, and then come here. Knight can look to go here to attack the rook. Because if his bishop takes, then we've got the support now with the knight. So we're slowly working the pieces together. So I think it was a good idea bringing the knight out. I think they lost a bit of tempo moving the pawn because they could have developed one of their other pieces. That's what I'm hoping. Our rook is looking to come here to challenge their queen. His knight is jumping into the game to come and get our pawn, maybe. I'm going to follow the tack that we're going to. If the bishop takes, or, oh yeah, the knight can take. But we're looking to squeeze the rook, maybe put a bit of pressure there. His bishop is protecting, so it's not a foregone win or anything. We're just trying to get more pieces up towards the king area, which is the answer process. And the simple direct moves, yep, to remove pieces from the pot. Whoa, and these queens come down now. It's going pawn hunting. He's also looking to bring his bishop here to attack our king here. His queen's going pawn hunting. I can't see any other benefit to that move. So I'm going to attack the rook, like we said. He does have his knight and his bishop protecting that square. So like I say, it's not it's not a finishing situation. It's just putting more pressure onto his king. His white square bishop can't get developed at the moment, so. He can't go on Queenside Castle just yet, so he might want to move his knight so that he gives his bishop space, but then his, his rook gets taken. So it's not winning. This is one of those situations I mentioned earlier. You know, you press forward and you press forward and it feels like you're winning, but if you're not supporting your pieces and um, working them together, it sort of falls flat because one piece can't do it by itself. It's so like this queen move here that the opponent has done is it looks like it's always oh, attacking the pawn is that opening something up I'm not sure we can capture the knight back it's just open space for his bishop that's all that's what we were mentioning you know making space for the bishop just make them yeah, that's right, making space for the bishop. Because he wants the queenside castle. But now he's only got one piece protecting that his rook. So, 
So it's got one piece protecting the rook now. If we then did go and take the rook with our knight, this bishop takes, then my queen would have to move back. Uh, so. Well, it's a higher piece, isn't it, I suppose, so we can take, I think. The bishop takes, we move the queen, maybe put a pin onto the king. Or maybe just come here. And then his bishop just goes backwards and forwards looking for a draw. Or do we want to give this, give some space? Let's go here for now. I don't think I want to do the backwards and forwards dance. His queen is on our knight. Our rooks want to get developed to face off on this d-file. His queen, his bishop can't come now and do the battery doubt. And so we can take this pawn still supporting our knight looking to still try and put pressure on the king area really want to open up this uh, bishop somehow but there's no point in doing something that doesn't need to win so it's moved down our knight can now go here to attack but before we move we come and move that way to attack the king and the bishop even better probably is the queen coming here or maybe not because on looking at that, his king can just come down here and it's attacking, but then I can take his queen off the board. Mm. Let's go for this one, because this seems to keep us in a more advantageous position. Yeah, okay, so his queen is there. What we want to do now is open up. Well, we could take the bishop first before we do anything. So I don't think there's anything that can take it, so we get the bishop for free. That's why that's what made me stop just then. So just because we're in this situation doesn't mean we're winning. We still have to be very careful because he does have a queen, does have a rook and bishop. His king's come back for the knight. We'll go and attack the king again. It's fairly comfortable in that spot. I think what we need to do now is develop the end game, which would mean developing the rooks. So whatever the king does now, let, let's not dance around with putting checks on, on that side. Okay, so I'll bring the rook across here, as we mentioned, for a discover check on the king. work these pieces together as best possible. This poor rook at the moment has got no play. Again, the white square bishop needs to probably open up. But for now, his king needs to find a space to go. His queen is staying on a dark square all the time, so it's impossible to get it. So if we do come this side, his queen, king can't go down, can't go back can go there so our queen will be chasing it around so let's go here and then we'd have to bring the queen up here to put a check here and then it hides into the corner here so it's um, looking fairly safe actually uh, we go and attack the bishop Does that help our case? Because then we can bring the, the queen to the g8 or h8. Double the rooks up. And he's blocked his queen, but he's coming through. We stay on the white square, dark square. We're going the dark square. So we could capture this pawn and maybe come here if anything goes funny. So the queen, queen is protecting now. And we, oh, I was just about to 
come and grab the queen. Okay, so that's how developing the the mantra and the answer working the pieces together, and that's how we're working. So have a look at the analysis board, see what that looks like, see if there's anything else that we can work on. So we opened up steadily. I mean, basically, we, we did discuss all of the moves that we were making, but just want to have a look at the gauge bar again. You know, it's it's a, another tool to help with your own development. Having a look at what a computer does think of your moves, but always remember, as I keep on saying it, and um, I would take it with a pinch of salt in terms of uh, if it's asking you to do something that you really would never ever think of doing in your life um, you have to challenge it and say well I don't really if you don't understand why it's doing it that's where the learning aspect comes in whereby if you really want to play like a computer or start thinking like a computer you take that away take that move away take that concept away and really try and understand what it what it is that that move really actually means and that's the only way you're going to get it into your game yeah so yes you can disagree with them and until such time as you really understand what they're trying to say i would just say stick with what you're doing and have belief in what you're doing and until such time as you start believing in the other types of moves but you have to research them and really practice them so we targeted the higher piece with a lesser piece and again targeted the higher piece with a lesser piece so that seemed to be okay for us and then again attacking the higher piece with a lesser piece and we were concerned about this particular move but we actually captured because we said we're sticking with the mantra and it looks like sticking with the mantra worked for us in terms of pressure in the king area and again that's not too bad so I'm feeling quite good so then obviously we're going for the rook now pressure in the king area but realizing that the queen capturing the pawn is not really a developmental move in terms of being able to actually get an advantage in the king area I mean there might have been nothing wrong with it but I felt that we, were, we would be losing a tempo in terms of development in the game so we developed the knight as we mentioned bringing the knight across and the cross towards putting pressure onto the knight or onto their rook and as we mentioned their queen coming down looking like it's pawn hunting on the b side really didn't seem to have any weight as far as we were concerned and we attacked the rook computer was over an hour and about whether that was a good move or not but um, and then the knight comes down we capture and the computer is basically saying it's all over from here really. so we capture so we didn't do anything bad at all and that is simple direct moves to remove pieces from the board strategically to get to get the answer